Hey, what's up guys? How we doing? Today we're going to talk about how to hold a runner on at second base as middle infielders. I got a question uh, from someone a few days ago asking if I could go over it and it comes at a really good time because over the last week or two I've seen a couple of youth baseball games and a couple of high school baseball games and I think this is one part of the game for infielders that really has to be improved upon. Um, I saw a lot of players that didn't really know how to hold on runners, didn't know when to hold on runners. So let's go over it today and help you guys out a little bit. So we'll start off with when we're holding the base runner, we need to know the situation. That's the first thing. So the first thing you want to know is what's the score. And obviously, if it's a closer game, then the runner second base will have a more a higher tendency to, to steal than if it's a game that's out of hand, if you're winning by, say, five or six runs. Um, or if you're losing by five or six runs. So the closer the score, the more chance that, that the runner may steal. We also need to know the amount of outs that there are. Now, most base runners will steal third base with one out. That's the best time to go. We don't usually go with no outs because we're going to give the hitter the opportunity to move us over. And we don't generally go with two outs because there's not a lot to gain. Uh, we're already in scoring position at second base, so most players won't take the risk of stealing third uh, because you don't get that much more of a benefit getting over there with two outs. So those are the two big situational things you need to keep in mind. The second thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you know the runner. Obviously, if it's a faster runner, we're going to have to keep him closer. If it's a slower runner, we won't have to keep him as close. Also, know his history. Is Not every fast runner is a good base stealer. Some fast runners just don't steal a lot. So no, try to find out by looking at his stats if you're able to get a hold of them. Does he steal a lot? Um, and then the third thing is, what is his lead? Make sure you're paying attention. Obviously, someone with a smaller lead probably won't be stealing as much. Someone with a bigger lead, we need to pay attention and get closer. Also, make sure that you're paying attention to differences in leads during um, for that same base runner. So let's say you see a lot of times base runners will have a smaller lead, and then all of a sudden they want to steal, and now they've got a bigger lead. And that should a light bulb should go off in your head saying, hold on a minute, this is different than what I just saw. Let's either call time and talk to the pitcher or let's put a pickoff play on. The last thing you want to keep in mind is knowing your, your teammates. So you want to know your pitcher and your catcher. What type of move to the plate does your, does your pitcher have? So if he's a really slow, slow move to the plate and it takes him a long time, well then most more base runners are going to steal off him. If it's somebody with a really quick move to the plate, we don't have to worry about the runner as much. And same thing with catcher. At low, lower levels, sometimes you'll have a catcher that's got a great arm, and the other coach is going to say, hey guys, we're not stealing today. Versus sometimes you might have a catcher that's not that good, and that means the tendency of the other team to steal is going to go way up. So know your teammates. So now that we have all of that mental stuff out of the way, let's get into more specifics about how we're going to hold on this runner. Now we'll start off with the shortstop and then we'll move quickly over to the second baseman. So there's a lot of different ways that you can hold runners and different coaches like different ways. But today I'm going to go over some ways that I found are more successful for me and some of the better ways I've seen some really good infielders do it. Now the first thing, it's important to be in a position where you have the option of doing two things. You can either put on a pickoff play if you want to, if you notice the base runner is getting too big of a lead, we can put a pickoff play on. The second option is we need to be in a position where we can get back to our position and make sure that we're covering ground. And those are basically the two options that we want. So we need to get into a good position where we can do both. And in this example, you can see Jason Nix with the Yankees. He's in a position here where if he wants to, he can put on a pickoff play. He'll put on a daylight and we'll show it real quick because that's what he does. So he flashes, the pitcher turns and picks off. And we can do this anytime we want. Doesn't mean the pitcher always has to throw, and it doesn't mean we're always doing it just to pick off the runner, but we need to put this on every now and then so that the runner and the opposing team knows that this team is not going to let us steal third base. So it's very important to put it on sometimes even when you really don't think you can pick off a runner just so the other team knows that you have it in the bag. Once you've shown that you can do this, now from this spot, if we don't want to pick off, all we do when the pitcher picks up his foot to deliver the ball to home plate, we're just going to take two shuffles back towards our position. And by the time the ball crosses the plate, we should be set, ready to field the ball somewhere in this area. Now, we're not always going to be able to get 
exactly back to where we may want to get with nobody on. But in every situation in baseball, you have to give up something to get something. And in this case, we're going to give up a tiny bit of range to make sure that this runner cannot steal third base and also can't get such a big lead and a big jump that he scores easily on a single. So we're going to have to give up a little bit of something. So find yourself a position somewhere in this area where you can do both. Now the question I get a lot is, should I bang my glove and yell and say back and all this stuff to the short to the runner or should I just be quiet? Well, there's a lot of different things you can do. But one thing I notice at, at younger levels is there's a whole lot of clapping the glove and yelling and screaming and jumping all over the place. You don't have to go to that extreme. If you're in a good position to be able to do both, put on a pickoff and get back, and you show that you can put a pickoff on and you put it on every now and then, that's really all you need. And the second base, the, the runner on second base and the third base coach is not going to let the runner get off that far. They're going to know that you can put those on from that position. If you want to tap your glove every now and then, just so the runner knows you're close, that's fine. But throw on a pickoff play, and that's all you're going to need, and he's going to know that he can't get off that far. Now, I want to hit real quick before we go over to second, why it's important to be in this position right around here where we can put both on, and why we don't want to be too close to the bag or too far away, because that's what I see a lot of young players do. What I'll see a lot is a player, a shortstop, will really want to hold a runner, so they'll play two, three feet off the bag, really, really close to the bag. Now, this may seem like it's a good idea to keep the runner close, but the problem with this is we have to get back to our position. And for one, we probably won't be able to get back to where we need to get to to make sure that when the batter hits the ball, we're able to field it. But the second thing is, if we're in this position and we leave and start shuffling back, well, the second base, the guy on second can see you. So once he sees you leaving, he can just extend his lead. If you put yourself in this position, he has no idea what you're going to do, whether you're going to pick off or get back. So that's why you don't want to get too close to the bag. And the second thing I see a lot is we'll hold from way back here and try to put on a pickoff from all the way back here. So yeah, we're in a good position to feel the batted ball from back here, but now the runner can get an even bigger lead and the third base coach can see a pickoff play coming from a mile away if you're standing way back here. Once you start running in for the pickoff, third base coach says back and the runner gets back easily. So that is why you want to be in this position, a good option for both. You put a pickoff play on or you get back and the runner has no idea what you're going to do. So now let's go over to second base. At second base, it's basically the same exact thing. So you want to put yourself in a position to where you can do both. You can put on a, a daylight pick by flashing your hand and breaking the second. But if the pitcher delivers the ball home, well, we're two shuffles and we're back in a good enough position to feel the ball if it's hit. There's a few different ways you can do it, just like the same thing at shortstop, and you can fool around with them. One thing when I was with the Yankees, what they liked us doing as second baseman is we played deeper. So instead of holding the runner somewhere around here, we would move closer to the bag, but we'd move back further this way. And the reason they wanted us to do that is because from that position, the second baseman can't really see you, or excuse me, not the second baseman, but the runner on second can't really see you. And also, if the third base coach is off in this direction somewhere, it's tough for him to see you through the runner. So I'd position myself somewhere right here and I'd get in the view of this third base coach so that he can't see me because of his own base runner. And now it makes it a little trickier for them to be able to tell when you're breaking to the bag for pickoff. The one thing I did notice is it makes it a little tougher to get back into position, but you can switch it up and use it if a right-handed hitter is hitting that's a real pull hitter and that doesn't hit the ball the other way at all, you can probably be safe getting playing in this position and only getting back to about right here. Um, and if it's a right-handed hitter that really sprays the ball or maybe even uses the opposite field a lot, well, then maybe you don't want to use that type of technique to hold them on and you'll go back to your normal technique right here. So there's a lot of different things you can do. I just want to kind of let you guys know um, the different ways you can do it. But... Uh, just to simplify it again real quick is just to make sure that you're in a position where you can put on the pickoff and get back to your position 
um, kind of that middle ground to do both. So let me know if this helped you guys out at all. If you have any more questions, um, I know there's probably a lot of questions out there. I try to cover everything I could. So let me know. Uh, share this video with your friends. Like it. Subscribe to the channel. Comment in the section below. All that good stuff. And we'll talk to you later.